Hey, this is Joey Cape from Lagwagon, and you're watching Pitcam.tv. Uh, hi, this is Pete for Pitcam.tv, and we're sitting here with Joey from Lagwagon. Uh, hi, Joey, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. You getting uh, your Me stomach dinner, filled? Which is kind of rude of me. That's all right. That you should have a bite before going on stage. Absolutely. Yeah. I like to take a bite right before I answer a question. That's cool. It makes it, you know. It makes it, it actually. Maybe we're just asking the same questions as everyone, so it makes it kind of a new answer yeah. then. Mysterious. It's more <laughs> mysterious. Right. Um, well, let's go with the first question then. Um, obviously, you're in the middle of your European tour, and how how's that going so far? Great. It's been really good. Um, you know. We're touring with the Flatliners and Western Addiction, and they're both bands that I really like, and really good people, and shows have been good, and yeah, it's just good. Just everything, everything is really good. Yeah. Sweet. Really fun. Awesome. Um, is there any city in particular that was just amazing to, like, I don't know, play at, or just to visit, or? Oh, well. I mean, the, the, to visit, it, it's always cities that I haven't been to before where I get a chance to walk about and see things that I haven't seen. And there was a few of those in France, uh, Cognac, and um, I can never say the name of the city quite right. I think it's Le Havre. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but the, the best shows have been since we got back to this part of Europe. I mean, Dortmund a couple okay. nights ago was arguably the biggest show of the tour and it was really really amazing and uh before the night before that amsterdam was really good i think tonight's gonna be really good i bet tonight's gonna be really good yeah me too um have you actually had the chance to see a bit of berlin today since you've been here or just uh, stuck yeah, i did i i we were here yesterday too we had a day off and um but i've been to berlin so many times um i don't i can't define the regions of Berlin, but I kind of know where I am most of the time and I, I, I know how to get around on the uh, train. So I, I went to the dentist today. That's exciting. Oh, okay. I got a new tooth over here fixed, which broke on stage in France. <laughs> I ended up okay. eating part of my tooth or something. But, so yeah, I got, I got my tooth fixed today. That's, that's fun. What did I do yesterday? Uh, oh, we had a really nice dinner last night. So boring. What can can you remember where the dinner was? Maybe that's. I mean. Yeah, it was at a place called Piazza Bra. All right. It's an Italian restaurant, and it's uh, it's in a neighborhood that I I don't really hang out in, but it's uh, lots of really fancy shops for oh, okay. like rich women. Okay. Well, they at least had a good Italian restaurant then. Yeah, great restaurant. Hang was released in the end of 2014. Um, from what you've witnessed, how was the reception of the fans so far? It's been uh, exceptionally good. I feel like all I'm saying is the word good, but <laughs> you're asking the questions, you know. Um, it's yeah, planned that way. It's planned yeah. that way. It's a very positive interview. No, it's been really nice. Uh, I think we haven't had, as far as I can see, we haven't had any negative reviews of the album uh, at all. And um, most of the feedback that we've gotten from people that we, you know, we meet at our shows and and then you know things that we've seen in magazines i don't look at that stuff unless it just is in my face you know i don't seek it out but it's all been really positive and what's more important is we're playing a lot of the songs live and the way the audience reacts to the new songs uh it's never happened before with our band you usually have to maybe wait a couple of years mm -hmm. like you can play the songs live but It, the crowd gets very calm when you play the new songs because they don't know the songs yet and this is different on this album for some reason it's like but i think it, it it's because people can see when you're happy you know when when you want to be doing what you're doing and when there's an intensity in the band you know coming off stage um they can see that they can see the syn the chemistry and that creates syn synergy or something and, uh, It's just, yeah, it's been, I'm very happy. Awesome. Well, that's good. And it's an amazing album. Thank just, you. Thanks very much. Um, see? See, very positive. Likes it. Absolutely. I'm a big fan. <laughs> um, if only my daughter liked it. Uh, sorry. She, she will, she will. I don't care about all this. I just want her to like me. Well, I mean, sh she'll get to that age, I guess. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Um, Speaking of age, if you play your new songs live and direction, obviously it's really good. Um, 
How is it when you like grab back 10, 15 years and play some of the old stuff? How's the audience reacting to it now? Uh, it's uh, mostly good. I, I, I think, you know, I try to design the set list based on it's partially what we want to play, of course, but, uh, but I, don't, I don't really put songs in our set list anymore that I know are generally not that great live, okay. you know, for the audience. So we've been around long enough. I feel like we kind of play, a, it's pretty packed with, you know, the, the ones that, that, that sound good live, that like oh. work with the audience. And um, yeah, I mean, I think it's a good set. We'll see what you think. We'll see. We'll see tonight. Once again, uh, back to the album. Um, it sounded to me and the people that I talked about it with it is it, it's a mixture of all the former albums, but not sounding like the same record again. But like the like uh, one of my friends said, like the lag wagon we love, and like a really fresh and 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 forward approach. Lag wagon glove. <laughs> lag wagon glove. No, like, like the lag wagon we love. Oh, love. Yeah. He said the lag wagon glove, like you put it, like it. Yeah. Well, it, it, it absolutely fits. Like, uh, if, if you want to, if you want to say glove, it, it fits. Right. Um, but how, how did you approach writing on, on this album? We, there was a lot more, it was the most collaborative record that we've made. I mean, we really worked together a lot from the early stages of, of the songwriting process. In the past, I think, in general, I usually have a record pretty much almost entirely kind of worked out, at least in my mind, mm -hmm. when I come to the band and then, then, then the band would, then we kind of, you know, then we start to hash through things and, and um, everybody puts their stamp on, on the song. But this was different. I, I, I came to those guys much earlier because of the kind of chemistry that had been happening in the band in the last few years, I felt if we really just developed the songs together that we'd make a much better record and I was totally right and and now the band's so happy and and uh, I mean I don't think we've ever played as well as we're playing live and it's just so it was such a good move and and now I'm just kicking myself for not doing that a long time ago <laughs> you know but I think you get into every band has some sort of system of how they create and ours was just different until now and I guess it's lucky that we're having some kind of awakening like that this late. It's this very strange thing. But that, that was the process. We spent months, many months, uh, just in a room together playing through the songs and we would kind of go from the basement where we could be loud up to the living room and where we could just sit and drink beers and talk about the songs and back to the basement and we just did that for months and months and, and everything just got better and better and each person got to really have their way with the song you know it's the only record i've ever been involved in where i feel like everyone in the band loves it all right so cool that sounds amazing maybe, maybe that was the reason it took nine years then when you got to yeah. from the basement to the living room drinking beer back to the basement well, the, the, the process after the nine years was probably really only a couple years <laughs> so more like seven years of uh yeah There were, I mean, we did make one EP in there that they, they we, we seemed to kind of want to forget. Um, but yeah. Why is that? It was a bit forced, which is something that we've never done before then. Um, I really believe that it's more important to wait until you understand what your band's supposed to be doing rather than doing what I think a lot of bands just put records out on a very regular basis because they're... They're so concerned with what the fans are going to think and um, not so much about their music. I'm not questioning the integrity of other bands, but I think the reason people put albums out fairly often is they want to keep the momentum going. You know, like it has to, you, you tour, 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 and then you make music and tour. And I think that's all true. The only difference is I don't think it's a bad thing to make music with other projects because I don't want my band to make a bad record. Uh -huh. And the only time we ever started to give into the pressure was a certain amount of years ago when we made the EP. Okay. And and the EP, I think my older brother listens to Lagwagon. I mean, I like the sound of it, I like it, but it doesn't sound like a Lagwagon album to me. It's different somehow. And I know why. It's because I had just finished my first solo record and 
the band really, really wanted to work on new music. And I said, well, I, I have these songs. And then we basically sort of punkified, mm -hmm. you know, my acoustic songs, which they're not written with the same intentions, like dynamically, you know. Mm -hmm. And so it just didn't, it just doesn't really work for me, that record. And although, although. Opposite of Hang. Opposite. opposite of Hang, although I really like the uh, Arantz version on it. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, there's some moments. There's moments on it. That, uh, uh, and, I, and again, I don't think it's a bad EP. I still think it's okay, so I don't feel completely ashamed that we made it. But to me, it's just it was a little bit of a hiccup in the general kind of way we've been doing things for years. It was something to, to feed in between while the record was in the making. Yeah. Let's say that. And yeah, I guess it, it just, I mean, it. you know, the irony of that is that you do something like that to make keep your family happy mm -hmm. including me you know just having new music um, but because there was some force in it you know because it was it was slightly enacted we don't play those songs live okay and there it is you know we want to play the whole new record live mm -hmm. and we started on this tour like at the beginning not this European version part, but the beginning the first When we first started touring, we were playing the whole record live, and we 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 just said we're just going to do the whole thing, and people just have to deal with it, you know. And then we did a few shows, and we thought maybe this is a little too hard to do the whole record. <laughs> maybe we should do so. Now we're doing something like eight songs from the okay. record, but I think it's just about right. Okay. Um, on Hang, you covered two songs on the on the bonus or the special edition of yeah. Hang. You covered. Um, Don't Laugh At Me from Peter, Paul and Mary, and you yeah. cover an Exit from The Use For A Name. May I ask why you covered those two songs? Uh, well, we had already been doing Exit, and um, and we actually had been working so hard on just the st our, our songs for the record. Uh, I think I kind of forgot that we, we needed bonus tracks, because it's good to have bonus tracks so that you can have special releases of an album. And we had one that was an original, um, but it's the only song that didn't work. Like, it just didn't come out right. And then we had this almost like it just made sense. It was a, sort of a tragedy, but it was like, it was kind of perfect. We lost the files for the drums on that song. All right. We had a drive problem, and our backups weren't perfect. Okay. And we lost most of that song. So it was like, well, we can't do that one. And and I think a few of the guys, I think all of us were kind of like, well, that's fine. We didn't really want to put that. So we decided just at, uh, at the end to record Exit because we'd already played it for quite some time live, you know, after Tony passed. And then the other one, I just always thought it would be a really good punk rock song. And it's right. a song that, uh, you know, my daughter loves. And and, uh, and I, just, I just always thought it'd be a really great fast punk song. And... I mean, we learned it in like five minutes. It's okay. it's so simple that song. That makes for a good punk rock song. It, it's good, right? It like it has such a good melody, and the lyrics are really sweet. It's nothing like the rest of the lyrics on Hang. <laughs> well, yeah, they they're really good though. The the lyrics on Hang. I think so. Oh no, <laughs> don't you agree? Yeah, I mean, I'm happy with them. Yeah, but uh, I, it, the song "Don't Laugh at Me" and its sweet sentiment is a little different than the rest of the sentiment on uh, the rest of "Hang" is a bit more of a dark observation. Okay, well, yeah, I agree. I agree. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Playing shows for all these years and playing shows now in general, do you do you witness like a big gap of age in in your audience? Is there like the 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 forty year old like wagon fan that used to be there all the time, and then there is the the kid that whose older brother used to listen to Lag Wagon? checking you out for the first time? I mean, I think I see a lot of the same faces that I've seen for 20-something, 25, 23, whatever it's been that we've been touring. Uh, and they're, of course, much older. You know, they're not all my age, but some of them are. But uh, you do see some younger people, but I, it's really hard to tell now. Everybody's got like beards that's young and stuff. Like you just really? can't, you can't. I hate beards. <laughs> no, I don't know anything against beards, but I, I think it's it, it's hard to tell. 
but you know, there's, there's certainly a, a point where you've been doing this as long as I have. And I sometimes look out into an audience in a town that I've played many times and I feel like I know everybody, you know, it's like, I know that face. I know that guy. I know that guy. I mean, some of the people I actually know, you know, I've spoken to them mm-hmm. so, so many times, but it, you know, there's, there's obviously some new faces here and there. So it's pretty mixed up then. I, or, I, yeah. or, I don't really see little kids at our shows unless their parents are bringing them to see the band that they liked for so many years, which is that, that happens a lot, but you know, it's, there's, you know, it's not like there's more than a couple of those at, at every show. Well, maybe they're trying the same, making like their kids like Lagwagon. Which is cool. Um, I, 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 I have mixed feelings about that. <laughs> Why? Well, I just decided when I had my daughter that I wouldn't do anything. I wouldn't do that. I wasn't going to ask her to listen to any kind of music or enjoy any kind of art. And I just wanted her to be as much the person that she would develop into, you know, just based on physics and genetics and not so much a... Uh, uh, that culturing kind of thing and my wife and I agreed on that and so we we you know I I put records on at home I don't abstain from listening to music I like but I rarely control the airwaves she's almost always in control anyway my daughter and um but I never I yeah I just I think maybe she's seen Lagwagon once or twice and only because they were traveling with me and she just ha- you know they came in for a bit it, but uh but she What I remember from when she saw us the first time was she said, it made me scared. Scared? She didn't like to see me that way. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, I, I always thought you put on a good show, but... Yeah, I think just, you know, it's just different than... Uh, yeah, I guess. That. You know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not any different in my mind, but, you know, just the the aggression of it or something and she's, she's very gentle and sweet and fragile and it's good but yeah she's not a Ramones fan and I wish she was well maybe with time I might have made a mistake <laughs> I should have fucking brainwashed her listen to this <laughs> but I don't think that's what it is with those parents I just have to qualify this because I do think like the other night in Amsterdam there was this guy on the side there was this little kid on the side of the stage mm-hmm. so cute just like probably like nine years old this okay. little boy and he he looked sort of like my daughter did he looks he looked excited but he also looked a little bit scared okay because you know imagine when you're nine years old and you went to like you know a sex pistol show or so whatever to many on your age you know maybe it'd be bad religion or something mm-hmm. you're a little kid and your dad's behind you But, you know, it's like all these people are just going bananas. They're jumping off the stage and slam dancing and all this stuff. And it, you know what I mean? It's, it would be it would be it would scare me. It absolutely. Be a little bit scary. Right. And uh, and th- that was totally different because I went over and talked to the kid at one point And then his dad just briefly. But the vibe I got, you get sometimes like. I think the son actually really likes the band a lot and he because he said you're, you're his favorite band or whatever so he might have been he, he might have thought just thought excited we were worthy of him being st- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. well joey thanks for your time thanks yeah, for the interview okay. and absolutely enjoy the show tonight in berlin thank you man thanks man oh, my first son um Imagine when I was. We get more views if you take off. Six. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna be flexing the whole time. That's what I do. Um, but yeah. Okay. I'll take it off. No, my nipples are actually kind of too hairy right now, so I'm gonna leave it. But um, imagine was my first one. I was 16, and I went to Little Rock, Arkansas, which is just like, you know, a town way out of out in the boonies to get um to get it done. 